So the big picture is that we actually got three versions of the uh, get letter grade uh, method that will, I would like to show you. Let's go uh, just uh, overall very quickly one by one. So for get letter grade uh, one, so this is like a version one that we did uh, that's working. So this one here, let me emphasize, is only a single if statement. So you should really think about this whole thing over here. The one I'm trying to highlight over here, uh, I'm trying to search a uh, box over here. So this is just a single if statement. On the other hand, if you look at get letter grade two, right? So we're going to show you the incorrect version versus the correct version, of course. But at least we should know syntactically there are multiple if statements over here. But how do we tell? It's very important for you to see. So we're talking about get letter grade two. Let's not worry about the uh, branching condition just yet. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But should, we should really see that number one over here, this is one single if statement. So this is just another if statement over here. Okay, so this is another one. And etc. All right, so how many do we have? You can see this will be the first if statements. So this will be the second if statements. So this will be the third if statements. And we also got uh, number four. Okay, let me try to be a little bit careful over here. So this will be number four. And also number five, number six, number seven, number eight, and also number nine. So, and number nine. So in total, we actually got nine if statements. It's really important for you to really tell the difference from this uh, get letter grade number two versus get letter grade number one. Syntactically, they're very different. This one got only one single if statement, and this one got um, independence, nine if statement, multiple. That's why I said multiple over here, right? Syntactically, let's, let's clarify that. All right, so now let's talk about the branching condition, which is very important, right? So here I talk about two terms over here. One is called overlapping. Overlapping. And the other term I talk about is non-overlapping over here. And let's now define what we really meant. And the best way to really define this will be to look at that visually, right? When I say overlapping, that simply means it is possible to have a value that can satisfy multiple conditions simultaneously. Okay, what do I mean? So now I want to focus on, now let me just make it a little bit larger over here. Uh, actually, that's fine. I want to now see the branching condition one by one for the overlapping, right? To For the single if statement. So now let's go one by one. You can see this is the first branching condition. Marks larger than or equal to nine. Oh, by the way, you can see for all of them, it's simply just uh, larger than or equal to, equal to, equal, 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 and equal. So which means uh, if you want to visualize it on the number line, uh, you should be a solid dot, which means the, not, uh, the, the pivot point is actually inclusive, right? So let me just uh, get it right, first of all. So uh, it's going to be 55, 60, 65. So these are all the pivot points, which I'm going to uh, show you how the how the range how the ranges look like. Now the first one. So let's let's say larger than or equal to ninety. It's going to be exactly. Uh, let me just do a little bit thicker over here. It's going to be like this. Larger than or equal to ninety. And the next one. So what about uh, larger than or equal to eighty? The second branching condition. So it's going to be larger than or equal to eighty. Right. So now, can you see that it's actually overlapping? Well, hopefully you can see that, right? You can see there it is possible to actually find a value that is going to satisfy both the green condition and also the orange condition. Can you give me such an example? In that case, for example, it could be, uh, let's say, 95. So 95 is going to be larger than or equal to 90, and also 95 is also going to be larger than or equal to 80, meaning that an input value 95 is actually going to satisfy this branch and also it's going to satisfy this branch as well. Actually, it's going to satisfy all the branches as you, you will see, all right? Let's go a little bit further. Okay, let me just uh, go, go just go over a little bit more and then uh, eventually we want to use a test value to really see how, uh, how, how, uh, how the whole thing actually works, okay? Let's be patient over here. So now, uh, let's say large marks larger than we go to seventy-five. So that'll be uh, this one over here. Okay, seventy-five. You can see ninety-five also satisfy that, right? 
and then let's uh, try this blue over here larger than or equal to 70 oh actually let me just make it a little bit over here and then we're going to get larger than or equal to 65 and then we're going to get uh, larger than or equal to 60 almost done the next one it would be uh, larger than or equal to 55 so you can see 55 is here so we also overlapping here you can see lots of overlap however depending on exactly how the if statement is going to be executed at the runtime uh, is going to make a difference between version 1 and version 2 okay we're gonna see that and then finally we also got let's say larger than or equal to 50 over here and then it's going to be uh, larger than or equal to 50 here and then of course this will be inclusive so I'm just going to include 50 over here and for the else part uh, I'm going to talk about talk, uh, talk about it uh, later but it's not really the focus for the uh, discussion all right so now we can see we got so many branching conditions over here I can I, I think you're convinced that this is really overlapping right for example for the very initial value of 95 you can see input value 95 is going to satisfy all the branching condition over here right so now the question to ask would be since 95 is going to satisfy all the branching conditions however is 95 going to be uh, used to really execute uh, the body of each branch so that's the question right and apparently the answer would be no for a single if statement however the answer would be yes for multiple if statement i'm going to make it even more uh, explicit for you but let's talk about this one over here quickly okay and the particular value i would like to use to really uh, test would be let's say 63 okay just uh we can see enough uh overlapping so that we can stop and then uh get a point so now you can see 63 is going to be around over here right 63 so that means 63 is actually going to actually satisfy uh, how many condition you can see 63 is going to satisfy these three condition over here these three so that'll be the satisfying condition meaning that it's going to satisfy uh larger than or equal to 50 and also larger than or equal to 55 and also larger than or equal to 60 but all the above uh branching condition it will fail to satisfy right but now we want to see what's going to happen at the runtime that's really important and let me just manually uh, trace the code on the code uh, on the code directly on the paper and then we're going to see the debugger to see how exactly it will do remember last week we actually introduced about how to use debugger and now starting from now we should really keep using debugger to really make sure you really get an idea okay let's try 63 over here so now the marks will just be 63 so now we're going to evaluate the very first branching condition 63 larger than or equal to 90 is going to be false meaning that we're going to bypass the body of the branch and then we're going to go ahead and evaluate the second branching condition 63 larger than or equal to 80 is also going to be false so we're going to buy back bypass the body over here and then go ahead so basically for a, a single if statement you're going to keep evaluating the branching condition until the very first one that actually uh, that will actually evaluate it true all right okay next one so now 63 larger than or equal to 75 will also be false meaning that it's going to bypass and then 63 i'm going to evaluate the next one 63 larger than or equal to 70 is going to be also false so also bypass and then how about 63 larger than or equal to 65 when we evaluate this it's also going to be false bypass so now you can see 63 larger than or equal to 60 is going to be true meaning that we're actually going to execute this particular line over here and then the letter grade is actually going to be remember initially the letter grade is actually simply empty string so think about you have a variable over here called letter grade right and that initially is simply just empty string but now this particular first satisfying branch is going to be true for this branch over here so we're going to assign the letter grade to be c so you're going to replace this by c right that's what we're doing and then according to the semantics or according to the meaning uh for execution of a single if statement 
once we are done, once we execute this particular branch over here, you can think about this is the first satisfying branch. And according to the uh, meaning for if statements, once this is done, we're not actually going to do any of the rest for the same single if statement, right? Meaning that we're going to bypass the rest. You can think about the rest of the if statements is going to be bypassed. So now since like finally we're simply just going to get the letter grade is simply uh, C according to uh, corresponding to marks 63. So that's why this version over here is actually correct, even though we got overlapping condition. All right, so that's about the first uh, version over here. And let's now verify very quickly the tracing of execution we just did on the paper. Let's see how we can do it on Eclipse using debugger, all right? All right, let's go back here. I assume you already know how to uh, launch the debugger uh, by studying the uh, last week's uh, tutorial videos. So let's now, uh, we can definitely put a breakpoint in the console application, but let me show you this week how you can trace. Uh, let me use the second uh, second way of tracing. We can actually launch the debugger and try to execute some JUnit test. I think that might be more beneficial for you, okay? All right, so now let's try this. Uh, we got JUnit tests uh, uh, package over here. Let's now create a new class. So JUnit test case over here, and then let's say test utilities. Or maybe just test grade, actually, since it's a great class. All right, we're going to choose uh, JUnit 4, and then we say finish. And then it's going to add uh, to the library, just as usual. Okay, so now what we'll do is let's try that particular value, 63. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to say string, let's say simply say result is simply equal to, so we're going to get our grade. Uh, method of uh, grade class over here dot let's say get grade one so that's the first version that we talk about and then we're going to put uh 63 over here right and then what do we expect to see it should be a c for the grade so we're going to say assert equals over here and then what do we expect to see we expect to see c and then result is going to be whatever that's going to be returned agree all right so now what we want to do is we want to pause the execution right in the beginning of this line over here and they want to step into get letter grade one right we talk about the, the difference between uh step into step over and step out right you can review that from last week i'll put a breakpoint over here okay and then i'm going to uh launch the debugger right you can move your mouse over the bug button here you say it's going to uh, debug test grade so that's the right class to debug so i can click on the bug button here Click on that, and then I want to switch to the debug perspective. And then I'm now here, right? You can see I'm right before I try to execute this line over here. That is why under variables, I don't have the result just yet, but I will if I say step over. But I don't want to do step over in this case. I want to step into to see what happened. So now what I will do is I'm going to say uh, step into over here. Oh, sorry, step into over here. Sorry, the leftmost icon here. I want to step into. And then you can see the marks I'm talking about right now is simply 63, right? And then you can do the following exercise. Uh, these might just be the things uh, from last time. So I can simply remove the expressions over here. I don't need them anymore, okay? You can definitely try this. You can see currently the marks, you can see if I type in expression, marks is simply 63. And then if I say the first branching condition marks larger than or equal to 90. So that's simply false, right? And then I know that it's going to be false also for 90, 80, 75, 70, and 65, right? And, and, and etc. Right? So you can see marks larger than or equal to 80 is also false, right? It's going to be false all the way to. So now if you try, so now also marks larger than or equal to 65, you can see this branch over here is also going to be false, right? And then we're going to try marks larger than or equal to 60. It's going to be true. So this will be the first satisfying branch. And then let's try another one. If I say marks larger than or equal to 55, it's also going to be true. In fact, all these branches will also be true. However, are they going to be executed? That's the that's a, uh, the, the question we want to ask. All right, let's now, we already can predict what's going to happen. All right. So now I'm now right before I try to execute out uh, the 
line number five. So that's why I don't see LG in the variable. You don't see it just yet. But now if I say step over over here, you can see LG is over here. Initially, it's simply just empty string. Nothing has been assigned, all right? Let's go back to expressions. We know that for the very first branching condition, we know that it's going to be false. So if I say step over, what's gonna happen? I'm going to bypass line number eight, the body of the branch. So I'm gonna to skip to line number 10. If I say step over, exactly, right? And also for the second branch, larger than what you call the 80 is also going to bypass. So I'm gonna to skip to line number 13, all right? And then similarly, so you kind of see, you kind of see the point, right? And then I can now, so I know for larger than or equal to 75 is also false because it's now 63, right? So now I, if I say step over, it's going to skip to uh, line number 16, okay? 63 larger than 70, larger than or equal to 70, I'm going to skip to line number 19, all right? So now 63 larger than or equal to 65 is still false. So I'm still going to bypass, all right? So now this is the point over here. Right? You can see so far, it's corresponding to exactly what we did up to over here. We bypass all the branching condition up to now. And now we are checking this one here, which we predict is going to be the first satisfying branching condition. All right. So now we're going to do, uh, if I say, uh, you can see 60 over here is going to be true. So now if I say step over over here, it's going to execute the body of this particular branch, which is going to reassign LG into C. Uh, right, and now if you can see this, I can put LG over here. Okay, you can see LG at the moment is simply empty string, nothing there. As soon as I say step over, it's going to become C. All right. So now the question is, this branching condition over here, larger than or equal to fifty-five, we know that it's going to be true. However, is it going to be evaluated though? The uh, the answer is no, because the, the very definition for a single if statement, right? We talk about this is a single if statement, okay? And then you're going to keep trying the branching condition until you reach the very first one that actually satisfy and then execute the body of the uh, branching, the branch, and then gonna bypass the rest. That's the uh, meaning, that's the semantics for executing a single if statement, right? That's something that should, should have been covered in your lecture. All right, so now uh, I'm just going to try. If I say step over, it's simply just going to uh, bypass all the way to uh, return LG, right? You can see over here, right? So that's the, the end of this particular uh, get letter grade one. And then eventually just going to return LG being C. So that's why this version here really works, all right? Before I switch back to iPad, let me stop this and then let me switch back to Java perspective. And now let me switch back. Now, that's about why the first version really works. And I also review about how you should really predict uh, how a single if statement is going to be executed. 